Sagittarius, thanks for tuning in to your August horoscope. My name is Athen. So let's start this off by looking at your ruler Jupiter. Jupiter has been in your eighth house, so this will continue to be the theme for you. The eighth house has to do with growth, spiritual growth, transformation, releasing our attachments to things that we might be overly attached to. It's the part of the chart that has to do with the Phoenix rising up out of the ashes and transforming into a spiritualized essence, okay? And in order to do this, though, it's about having to let go, okay? It's also like the caterpillar turning into the butterfly as well. The caterpillar actually dies and something new is born. But it's not until we're able to let go of all those parts of life that just have to Go. I mean, that's just how it is. Um, without this sort of death, there is no life. And they're one and the same things. And of course, as us humans, we look at life and we're uh, obviously attracted to the, the life aspect of life because we're alive. Okay, All the things that promote our life, we're attracted to. And we're detracted to the things that don't. But if you move beyond that, uh, more you know basic view of it and you look at it from a higher perspective you'll see that it's all part of the same process and without one you wouldn't have the other and they're both beautiful so I think you're understanding this and this is the theme for you and will continue to be this month it's about seeing the beauty of that and, and understanding how that's the uh, that's ne that's necessary for life so this is also playing into your big picture. Like I said, it's, it's been going on. And the big picture always involves Saturn. We can't talk about Jupiter without talking about Saturn. And these two planets, you know, they're the slower moving of the personal planets. They're the furthest away, but you can still see them with the naked eye. They have to do with the creation of our reality. Jupiter is the expansion element like the expansion of the sacred geometry, the light that is shooting out in all directions. And then Saturn is the definition. It's the place where the light doesn't go or where the light kind of goes around, which creates the definition, okay, the, the, the geometry. So these, this is how these two planets interact, and it's how our reality is created. So for you, there's all of this expansion in your growth and your transformation in your life, okay? And in order to manifest, in order to be a part of that creation process, we have to bring in the elements of Saturn. And so for you, Saturn has been transiting your 11th house. This is the, the house ruled by Aquarius. It has to do with the community. It has to do with unity. And it also has to do with scientific aspects of life, science, and also our ideals as well. So with Saturn, there, there's been a lot of lessons, a lot of hard work, perhaps uh, a feeling of limitation in that area, but it's all for the maturity aspect. It's all for the creation aspect, okay? It's making you into a more mature person and more responsible person, more realistic person in that area in regards to those ideals, the community, friends even, or... Um, even in terms of science. Perhaps some of you are, you know, really getting into understanding the aspects of science and of technology. But whatever it is for you, continue that creation, continue that hard work and creation in that 11th house area and join that up with the growth with Jupiter in the 8th. When you merge these two together, then you're really mastering the uh, manifestation principles of creating your reality. So an example of this might be, you know, by understanding the growth aspects of life. You're understanding how the universe works, 
Okay? The understanding of how it works is the eleventh house. Or perhaps by letting go of attachments in your life, you're, in, you're, you're, you're creating stronger and better relationships with the community or with the collective or with the world at large. So however this is playing out for you, continue to allow all of that expansion in the transformation house, in the transformation area of your life, and put in that discipline and that hard work into the um, 11th house aspects with Saturn. And then through this, you're really opening up your ability to manifest. Okay. Now that's the big picture. So let's talk about the small picture. Let's talk about Venus and Mars. Okay, the two, these are also polar planets, okay? And it's the same thing with the, with the sort of a creation of the universe, except this is on a much more mundane level. A, you know, these planets travel faster, so more day-to-day -day sort of level. And for you, it's significant to this month. So this month, we, you have Venus in your seventh house up until the seventh, okay, for the first week. And Mars is going to be transiting your eleventh for the entire month, okay? Now, this is an interesting month because we've got Venus and Jupiter joining up, which are the benefics as they're called, and they're also that creation element. So they're joining up in the same house, okay? They're going to be joining up in your eighth. Mars and Saturn are going to be joining up in your eleventh. So there, it's almost like this month the big picture is now becoming refined in day to day. It's more it's almost like if you took a snapshot of the big picture of your life and then now you're making it a part of the microcosm, part of the day-to-day -day activities for you to refine it and create it and really manifest. So there's a lot of potential here for everyone to manifest long-term, just the bigger picture of their lives. Okay. So it has to do with tapping into the Venus and Mars energies. But for the first week, Venus will be in the seventh okay, until she joins up with Jupiter. So for the first First, for the first week, um, enjoy those relationships, okay? Tap into those relationships, those partnerships. Find out what you value. Do what you value in regards to them. Hang out, you know, be amongst those people who you enjoy your time with. Also, you know, in business matters, try to bring in more fun, more liveliness, more enjoyability, more enjoyableness into your partnerships and relationships. Okay? And this is going to open up your manifestations ability. It's going to help you enjoy yourself and open yourself up. Venus is that expansion aspect of it. Then couple that with action going into the 11th house of, again, the perhaps science, group, neighbors, community, friends, and your ideals. Ideals is like your aspirations in life. Okay? So put energy into that this month, the whole month with Mars there. All right. Do what aspires you. Put action into your big picture goals. Put put action into your community, into your friends, into your group sphere, and into technology or science for those of you involved with that. Join that up with your relationships, okay, for the first week. Incorporate the two. Maybe go on a convention for new science. Maybe, you know, these are just examples to help you understand kind of what 7th and 11th really means here. Um, or perhaps, you know, um, get, a, get more involved in your community and build re, build one-on-one -on -one relationships within your community or your friends. Okay, That's the energy up until the 7th that's going to open you up for manifestation. Now from the 7th onward, Venus is then going to go into your 8th, so things are going to take a more real, meaningful element, okay? So you're going to enjoy the light-heartedness stuff for the first week, and then I think you're going to want to get deeper, okay? Because you're going to understand, again, with all this Jupiter stuff, I think you're going to understand that life is more meaningful when you get deep into things and more real. And you think you're going to want to do that, so do that from the seventh onward, okay? And again, continue to incorporate, you know, um, relationships within your groups and your friends, you know, incorporate those two together, one-on-one -on -one with the bigger sphere, except from the seventh onward, make it more meaningful, make it more deep, 
really connect, really get meaningful with the community, with the, the groups, okay? Now, so in regards to your 8th and 11th house, we're talking about Venus being the expansion principle and Mars being the refinement or action-oriented principle, the masculine principle to the feminine principle, that is Venus. So you're going to in be enjoying this growth process this month. Now, while doing this, while transforming yourself, getting more meaningful, getting more deep into life in general in all areas, incorporate more action into the community, okay? Share yourself, share these experiences with others. Get amongst the community, get involved with your neighborhood or maybe you're the online community or, you know, do things that are more humanitarian in nature, perhaps, or more global, larger. I think by doing this, you're going to be really unlocking the, your, well, for one, your manifestation principles, but also unlocking the more deeper, the deeper aspects of the world, okay, and of the community, and of the bigger vision. So, get involved. For those of you who um, perhaps are more introverted in nature, maybe just get involved in the more scientific, more technological aspects, or get involved with just sharing ideas online. All right, it doesn't necessarily have to be physically involved with group activities. It can be just sharing with the collective online or whatever. Okay. Do that. Put that energy in there. That energy is available for you all month. All right. And by doing those two things, like I said, you're going to unlock yourself, unlock your potential, okay, and, and create. And if you're creating within those realms, within that realm, then you're going with the flow of the universe. Now, let's talk about the moon and the sun, which is another polar aspect. And in this case, it has to do with your awareness. The moon has to do with your feelings, which are your inner awareness. The sun has to do with your conscious awareness, okay? Or your outer awareness, your self-awareness, your conscious self. Now, for the first half of this month, the sun is going to be in your eighth house, okay? So, understanding more about yourself in regards to this transformation, I think seeing yourself transform, you're going to see it, I think, this month. Seeing how you're transforming into a completely new person. And this is all setting you up for that cycle, like I said, with that phoenix rising up out of the ashes, going into the ninth house, which will be coming at the end of this month and into um, September. But you're going to see it. This is a very interesting month because the sun and the moon are also following in these areas in the transformation area at least. So the awareness of it, okay? You're going to be aware of the transformation. So pay attention to it. And you're going to learn more about yourself. Now, this is the energy up until the, the 16th, like I said. Now on the 10th, we're going to have a full moon. And the full moon is going to involve that sun in the 8th being aware of seeing that transformation aspect of yourself, seeing all the areas you need to release your attachments, and the moon in the second, okay, which has to do with your values. In this case, your inner values. What's important to your heart? What's important to you on the inside? So around the 10th, pay attention. Listen to this insight because it's through these values okay, that you're going to understand you know, more about the transformation process, what you want to make room for. Because the reason why we're releasing everything is to make way for, for the new, okay? And so the new will be coming if you make way for it. And I think you're going to understand this around the 10th. And by paying attention around the 10th, you're going to understand what those values are that you're making room for. And this is, again, all part of the manifestation. Without the awareness, without the intention, we can't manifest. So I think, you, I think everyone, and for you, particularly in regards to your values, you can be aware of what your intentions, what you want to manifest in life. Or perhaps you already know, and perhaps 
you, it's just going to expand and help you gain even more insight into the details of it. Okay. Now on the 25th, we have a new moon. Okay. Now the new moon is happening in the ninth house. So I think all this transformation okay, that hopefully you're doing this month is going to create a new you. And this is the phoenix that we're talking about here. A new moon in the ninth house is seriously like the phoenix coming out of the eighth house and new beginnings. But the beginning has to do with more collective issues, larger issues. It's the phoenix in this analogy is more like a divine messenger, phoenix is. The ninth house is about the road to God. It's about our connection to, to God. The ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth houses all have to do with larger, more spiritual aspects of life. All right. So understanding this, that you're now, that you've now transformed, and there's a new you now coming out, and this new you is is a, is a person of service, and the first aspect of that is creating a stronger link and a stronger connection with the divine. And that's the process taking place around the 25th. It's going to expand you. It's going to help you feel much more optimistic. It's like seeing the world in a different color, in brighter colors. And then that's going to start the new cycle leading into the following months as the sun and moon go through the top of your chart, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th houses, and so forth. Okay? So that's what I see this month for you, Sagittarius. If you have any specific questions, please get in touch. If you'd like a personal reading, I'm still offering 50% off my Skype sessions. So if you'd like a more in-depth look at your chart, please get in touch. All right, Sagittarius, thanks for watching and have a good month.